Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by AV Poetry. Uh, it's good to see you again. Sorry it's been a while, uh, but I promise I will make it up to you today. I have a new prose poem that I'm going to read to you. It's called Living with Ghosts. And this, this poem is basically about just uh, learning to come to terms with your past and uh, the people in your past that haunt you. Um, come on, we all have we all have a few you know those people that haunt us. Anyway, um, yeah. So this this poem basically uh, basically what it's about, and that's that's all I'm gonna say about it, I guess. Uh, so here here is the poem. I uh, will read it to you. It's called "Living with Ghosts." I suppose you can linger if you'd like. I'll set an extra place for you at dinner and take an extra towel down from the linens, as always. I never wanted a tattoo winked into my cerebellum, but you never much like to listen or to be forgotten. So I keep repeating words I never really got to say, so the script stays freshly etched upon each neuron. Perhaps when I am old, resting in a wheelchair, an aching bag of bones, you'll finally be on par with that mermaid on some ancient sailor's belly, only to be identified as rolls of indiscernible color only to be identified as the wishy-washy gray matter that you are. But that's a cheap shot, and I'm sorry. Time should teach us to be more discriminatory toward what we choose to say and do. In my defense, I'm still young. In your defense, you were, too. The circus music still plays, though. We still persist to be the main attractions of this freak show. I could never figure out how to dismiss you politely, so I struck up a deal with the matches. I owe a lot to those red-headed mercenaries. Sorry I never got the chance to pay them. From time to time I wander back to the old neighborhood where I first knew you for the sole purpose of poking through the ashes and kindling in search of a pleasant memory or two, despite the plethora waiting for me in the red brick house across the town. Have you seen it? Turns out I've always had possession, I just hadn't claimed the titles. Just recently I decided to redecorate in next year's colors. And I have many rooms and I have many guests whom I can always tuck in at night and turn out the light for and say goodbye to in the morning without a second's notice or glance. Some of them are family, most of them are friends. I occasionally get the odd acquaintance or stranger-bearing spiritual epiphanies. No one stays for long. And I've watched for you, hoping that you'll appear. Then I'd know you weren't a ghost. You see, people whisper that my house is haunted. But it's not in a trunk locked in the basement or buried deep below the earthen foundation. It's not between the sheet rock or hidden in the recesses of the upstairs walk-in closet. It doesn't hang out in the attic. It bears itself across my face with every twisted brow and each suspicious lip. It rattles about its words, shrieking conversations I won't soon forget. How do you get rid of a ghost? Well, don't try to kick it out of your home. But don't ask it what it wants because it doesn't know. Just treat it like you would any other guest. It's less disturbing that way and you'll always have company until it makes its peace. In the meantime, I'll set an extra place for you at dinner and take an extra towel down from the linens, as always. I suppose that you can linger, if you'd like. All right, uh, that's Living with Ghosts. Thanks for listening. It's always a pleasure to have you guys stop by. And uh, side note, I also posted another piece of short fiction on the site. It's called The Love Letter, A Gun and a Match. So if you just check under the short fiction drop down, it should be there. And uh, yeah, I'll double check after this just to make sure I'm not lying to you. Um, yeah. And I think that's everything for now. Uh, stay tuned until next time. And yeah, see you later.